Google is bringing pro-level video editing techniques to your phone. The search juggernaut is using AI and machine learning to make replacing backgrounds of video you take a heck of a lot easier. In fact, as easy as adding an Instagram filter to a photo. There's a lot of technical jargon explaining how it works, but I'll spare you today and just say based on the results, it looks pretty convincing all without the need for an elaborate green screen setup too. The tech is only available in a limited beta right now, and even then just for certain YouTube creators to get just a little more limited, the feature is just for stories using the video services new video format as well. Yes, they look like Snapchats and Instagram's video captures by the same name. We won't call it a ripoff though. The results aren't perfect. There are some halo-like artifacts around the edges of dark clothing, for example, but this looks like the next logical step after Google's AI-powered portrait mode for still photos on the Pixel 2. I'll let you know more when I hear more, but I imagine eventually this will be a standard feature and just as easy to use as a Snapchat filter. How exciting is this in this week's robotic news? There could soon be real life cyborgs walking among us. A Japanese robotics firm recently received approval from the FDA to bring its futuristic HAL robot suit to the US, Cyberdyne has been developing the Hybrid Assisted Limb, or HAL, for nearly a decade now. But only now has the firm been able to bring the technology stateside. The Brooks Cybernetic Treatment Center in Jacksonville, Florida, is testing out the robotic suit that is worn as an exoskeleton and can be used to help people with disabilities learn to walk again. The robot suit fits around the wearer's midsection and legs to provide support for people who are otherwise unable to walk on their own, such as people who are suffering from a spinal cord injury. What's even more amazing, however, is that the wearer controls the house suit using their mind. The machine is able to pick up bioelectric signals or an electric current given off by tissues, organs, or cell systems. The most common example of this is an EEG machine or equipment that's able to read brain waves. HAL has sensors that attach to the wearer's legs, which then detect bioelectric signals transmitted from the brain to the muscles. This then triggers the robotic exoskeleton to begin walking. The robot suit assists the wearer to walk, stand up, and even sit down by him or herself. Cyberdyne's website explains how also has a built-in remote with a simple interface that lets the wearer start and stop the machine, adjust its settings, and more. The goal with HAL is to give the wearer the vivid feeling that they're moving their legs all by themselves. Injured, you may only be able to give 1 or 2 percent, and then the robot gives the remainder to complete the motion. But with time, you get stronger and reach 3%, then 4 and so on. And the robot gives you less and less of that support as you improve. Cyberdyne noted that HAL isn't supposed to be a temporary exoskeleton, but rather a temporary pair of legs to help patients in rehabilitation. The goal is actually to get rid of the robot. Cyberdyne began testing on the HAL suit in hospital trials throughout Japan, and by 2012, HAL suits were being used at 130 medical institutions across the country. Cyberdyne says the HAL suit is the world's first robotic medical device. In addition to the HAL lower limb type, which controls leg movement, Cyberdyne also has the HAL 5, which is a full body exoskeleton for the lower arms, legs, and torso. HAL 5 can help the wearer lift and carry about five times as much weight as they could lift or carry unaided. Think about it, if you combine some of the stories that we've heard today, if you took, say, the HAL 5 suit and the robot carpenters, you may be able to build an entire house all by yourself. For more information, you can visit cyberdyne.jp.
And finally, happening in this week's What The, a driver made a quick getaway when speed cameras spotted him going 235 kilometers an hour. That's 146 miles per hour, by the way, in a Dodge Challenger on an expressway in Tokyo. But the law finally chased him down more than two years later. 41-year-old Yoshimiun Shira was arrested on March 1st after allegedly driving at the breakneck speed, which is 135k over the legal limit. That was in his American muscle car on the Chuo Expressway in Tokyo's Kunitachi. That was around 4.15 a.m. on July 29th, 2016, according to a police report. The Metropolitan Police Department arrested Shira at his place of business on suspicion of violating the road traffic law. The suspect is denying the charges, saying that it's not clear whether he was the culprit in the driver's seat. Shira's Dodge Challenger was identified in images captured by the Orbis Automated Speeding Monitoring System. The vehicle was driven without front number plates, an additional offense that the police plan to refer to prosecutors. Now, according to the police, more than five cases of overspeeding apparently involving the same Dodge Challenger have been identified on public roads in Tokyo and the Metropolitan Expressway since 2015. The Orbis also captured the driver waving his middle finger at the camera. Police are investigating those cases with Shira as the suspect. Thanks for watching your weekly tech update. If you have a story you think I should feature on the program, shoot me an email, djraymcneil at gmail.com. And of course, find us on Facebook too, at your weekly tech update. And you can check out our podcast on iTunes podcast. Till next time, I'm Ray McNeil. Good night, world.